Hi, Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts, back with a short word from Hebrew added with Pat's two cents. Okay, now, Hebrew chapter 11, starting, I think we're just reading this one verse. Verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hear this. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Are you diligently seeking him? Now we're on Pat's two cents. Are you? Are you spending time with him? Are you just having casual conversations with him and laughing with him and socializing with him and fellowshipping and enjoying his presence? What are you doing with your relationship? Now I know you remember when you were young and you were out there dating. How did you date? <laughs> You would go to the florist and buy some beautiful flowers for your date to be. Mm -hmm. And you might even bring a card or a box of chocolates, maybe some cologne. I know you did a little showering there. And you did everything to make that special somebody feel precious. Right? You wanted to make sure that they knew where they stood in your book, that you were quite mindful of them. Mm -hmm. And when you were around your buddies, you probably talked about how pretty she was and what a nice lady she was. I mean, you probably thought about her when you went home and called her on the phone too. Well, that's what we do when we're dating. We're not even married. Have you ever seen little silly teenagers on the phone? They'll get a phone in their hand. Hi, what you, what you doing? Uh, nothing, what you doing? Uh, nothing, I just thought about you. I thought I'd call. <laughs> Y'all ain't talking about a doggone thing. <laughs> but you just want to hear each other breathe. Well, that's the way we should be with God. We should long for him. But when you're first getting to know him, I understand. There is no way you can have that kind of feeling right at the very beginning when you're still getting to know him. But once you have bugged him enough to manifest himself to you, and you have that personal one-on-one -on -one close encounter of the God kind, oh yeah, then you start longing for that beautiful presence that he bestows on you when he shows up in your room, in your living room, in your bedroom, in your car, wherever that presence you feel when you're in church and there's that corporate anointing and the, the worship is high and the presence of God comes down real deep and it's real thick. You could almost cut that feeling with a knife. It's beautiful and eerie at the same time. Words cannot describe. But the more you start experiencing that, the more you start longing for it. And you might even just be riding to the store and, oh, Lord, let me feel your presence. Well, that's the same way we are. That's the silliness we get into with dating. But it's not silly when it comes to our longing for God's presence. Because the more we spend time with him, the more. And here's another way you have to draw close to God. You read his word. And you start, especially in the, um, well, and I can't say especially because you need to see both sides of them. The Old Testament and New Testament 
both draw vivid pictures of God's heart, of God's mercy, his love, his commitment, his dependability, his reliability, uh, the fact that he is not a man that he should lie, but he is faithful. He's faithful even to those who aren't faithful to him, at least for a season. He even says in the Old Testament that he's married to the backslider. So he doesn't just cut people loose at the first couple of, of uh, mishaps, you know, first couple of sins or, you know, whatever. No, he is committed to us. And there's a love. I'm telling you, when the Bible says God is love, he is love. And we are in his heart and we have never, I don't care how much you can say that you had the best husband or the best wife or the best parents or, or even the best children or the best friends. You are, I guarantee you this, no matter how much they love you, you have never experienced a love that could surpass God's. It's just impossible. His is literally out of this world. And it feels like it too. It's majestic, yet tender. I'm not even going to get into all the descriptions because I'll run out of words, trust me. But I just want to encourage you, draw close to God in through here because we're coming up in a season that is going to be kind of odd. It's going to be kind of severe in some cases. And some in some areas, some of us are going to be mercifully blessed. I mean, mercifully blessed. But there are going to be a lot that are going to have to go through. And it doesn't mean that, that, that some people are going through because of sin. It's just that time. And we're getting ready to usher in his second coming. We have to be ready, you guys. We have to be ready. And there are some things that some of us have to go through. I don't even want to think about it. In some ways, I don't even want to talk about those possibilities. But the main thing I want to say to you is understand that you have a father. If you have never had a father in your life, if you have no idea what it's like to be raised by a father who truly cares and loves, loves you, get to know God as your father. When you read that word, when I was talking about reading the Bible, the Bible literally paints a picture of God's heart towards us, his tender mercies, his kindnesses. Um, the Bible also shows that when God says something, he means it and he doesn't play. But... He is so long-suffering, you guys. But he's not a patsy. And he won't be played for a patsy. So get to know him. Really get to know him. And you will find that your loyalty to him will be higher and greater than your loyalty to anybody on this earth. You'll see that. And you will find yourself obeying him against human reasoning because you will be convinced after a while of walking with him, reading his word and experiencing him. You will become convinced that he truly has your best interest at heart. You hear me? When the Bible says when God is for us, who can be against us? Oh, yeah. If God be for you, baby, you're in a real good place. He'll set you in a large place. He'll set your feet on steady ground. You won't have to worry about tripping over your own feet and making a whole bunch of crazy moves because God will keep you as the apple of his eye. Get to know him as your father. Let him be your God. Don't fight him. God bless you as you develop your relationship with him and as you begin to see him manifest himself 
in your life. Amen.